This is lesson eight. We're going to look at absolute value functions and their graphs today. A function that's in the form of y equals the absolute value of mx plus b plus c, where the slope isn't zero, is called an absolute value function. And the line that divides the figure into two parts that are mirror images of each other, that's called our axis of symmetry. And a point where the function reaches a maximum or a minimum value is known as the vertex. So in our parent function, we can graph that parent function by making a table with x values. We'll just go from negative 3 to positive 3. And the absolute value of each of those is going to be a non-negative number. So the first half goes off to the left like that, and the second half goes off to the right as such. So it makes a V-shaped graph. And our parent function looks like that. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 0, and the vertex is at the origin. Some of the general information that you want to know is in, when you have this general form of a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, we know the absolute value of a is the compression or the stretch factor. So we either have a compression or a stretch. And that just depends on whether it's a number larger than 1 or a fraction between 0 and 1. H and K, those are our vertex coordinates. And X equals H is the axis of symmetry. And that's that imaginary line that splits the graph in half so that the right half and the left half are identical to each other in opposite directions. The family of absolute value functions, the behavior, is similar to um, what we saw in transformations. When you're subtracting k, that's going to move our parent function down k units. And when you're adding k, that's going to move your absolute value vertex up k units. So either down or up. On the next page, we have horizontal translations. When you subtract h, that's moving your vertex point, your x-coordinate. It's going to move that right h units. And if you add h, that's going to move that x-coordinate left h units. And like we said, when the a value is bigger than 1, that vertically stretches the absolute value function. And when the a value, that's supposed to be multiply, not divide. When the a value is a fraction, that's going to vertically shrink the graph. And we see reflections when you change the y, you're reflecting your absolute value graph across the x-axis. And when you change the x, you're reflecting your absolute value graph across the y-axis. So let's jump into practicing graphing some of these. Here we have graphing y equals the absolute value of x plus 2. So that's going to translate our parent function 2 units up. Translates 2 units up from the parent graph. And you want to know about the domain and range in, in most of these. So the parent graph doesn't alter its shape. It just shifts 2 units up and would look like such. So our domain is going to be all reals. And our range would begin at 2, including 2, and go up infinitely. So example 2, you could turn off the video and try this one on your own, and then come back to check your work with mine. 
So here we're graphing our HK has been shifted from the origin to positive 2, positive 1. And the slope is still 1, so we have that piecewise function with the right branch and the left branch. We have the vertex. This is our vertex. And I could name the domain as all reals. We can name the range as going from 1 up infinitely, including 1. And if you wanted to include the axis of symmetry, our axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 2. If you could imagine that vertical line here that splits the graph equally in half, the right half and the left half. For example 3, we're looking at the vertical stretch and the vertical compression. Example 3, that A value is 2, and it behaves like a slope. It's going to act like a slope, but we need a slope going positive 2 and negative 2. So the vertex is still at the origin, but we go 2 up and 1 right in the positive direction and we go two up and one left in the negative direction to get that vertical stretch. And then here we've got an A value that is negative two-thirds, so this is going to reflect across the x-axis, and that two-thirds is going to behave like a slope, so it's going to go either up or down, and then right or left to get that slope. So origin is the vertex. If you go down 2 and right 3, or let down 2 and left 3, you get that vertical compression. Graphing a general form what are the vertex and the axis of symmetry for the graph negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 3? And how is y equals absolute value of x transformed? So we know, first of all, let's think about the hk value because that's kind of like our starting point. That would be 1, negative 3, so we know where our vertex is. And the negative 2 on the A value is going to flip our graph across the x-axis, plus it's going to stretch, so the 2 is going to behave like a slope. And the axis of symmetry is at x equals 1. So this value on the vertex, the x-coordinate, is the axis of symmetry. So if you can imagine, you've got this imaginary vertical line at x equals 1, and it's going to split our graph, and 1, negative 3 is the vertex with a slope of 2 down, 1 right, 2 down, 1 right, repeatedly, and then back to the vertex, and 2 down, 1 left, 2 down, 1 left, repeatedly, so you've got this stretched graph that's translated from the parent. So it's flipped and moved one unit right, three units down. In our next set of examples, let's practice writing an absolute value given that we have the graph. So what is the equation of the absolute value in example six? So first I want to notice that I can see the h and the k value. So our vertex is at negative 1, positive 4. So we know hk is negative 1, positive 4. We know that the graph has been reflected, so we're going to need to have a negative on our a value, and I want to check the slope, and it looks like the slope is acting like 2 down one right, two down, one right in both directions. So our a value would be negative two. And putting all of those together into the standard form, 
then we would have y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus negative 1, and then add 4. So you want to try example 7 on your own and come back to check that your work and my work match. I see that the vertex is H, K, located at 1, 0, and the slope is 1 half. So this graph is translated 1 unit right, no units up, and there's a compression of 1 half and X minus 1 plus 0. Then our very final example, we want to graph each pair of the equations on the same coordinate grid and explain why the graphs are different. So graphing in blue, let's do this one in blue, and we'll graph this one in red. So the, our blue graph, 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 is going to display a stretch factor of 2 because A is 2, and our vertices, our vertex is located at negative 1, 0. So we're graphing that graph, negative 1, 0. The axis of symmetry is located at x equals negative 1. So we're having a stretch factor of 2, 2 up and 1 unit right, and then back to the vertex and two up, one unit left. So this is the first graph. And then our second graph in red, y equals the absolute value of 2x plus 1. We're going to need to do a little bit of arithmetic or algebra here because I want to set the argument. I'm calling the argument. Two x plus one. I want to know when that argument is zero, and that would happen when x is negative one half. So this is how I know what is happening with that particular graph. So I've got a translation one half unit to the left. Because you could rewrite this, if you thought about it, we could rewrite this to take a 2 outside and call that 2 times the absolute value of x minus negative 1 half. So we're shifting 1 half unit to the left, and it still has the stretch, but we're off just by a factor of of a half from the blue graph. So up to and go over 1 and up to and go over 1. So we're just in the middle. And that's how the graphs are similar yet different. This is the end to lesson 8.